Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Gabby Ree Show. Hi, everyone. We have Elijah Allen Blitz, and we are doing our bonus conversations, what I like to call counter talk. For those of you who have not heard this before, I am oftentimes in my kitchen, and Elijah is sitting at my counter, and we are having healthy conversation. Occasionally, I wouldn't call it debate, but discourse, kind of, yeah. Yeah, just, just a little back and forth yeah, we have different about, yeah. especially about technology. Um, yeah. You're always trying to get me to look at it as a tool. So I, I've been doing that and learning as we go. So I'll, I'll just dive right in. You came over this week and sat with me for a bit to really give me just an easy way to start using chat GPT for something that I have to do every week, which is I have to write, I choose to write my intros for my show. And it just talks about the guests, what we talked about the links to the guests, either websites, social media handles, books, and other things. So um, this can be time consuming as well as, it's not that it's tedious, but you want to do a good job. And so I I went ahead and used chat GPT. You taught me about the cues and just how you can add, change, modify, and then presto, there it goes. So I, I admit I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hey, I haven't heard this yet. That's great. (laughs) I'm so glad. And the thing is, is because you can really use specific cues or just in my case, actually, I, I didn't ask it to write it for me. I asked me it to rewrite right. it for me Yeah, because that right now works more efficiently for my needs. Totally. Um, now, I did mention to you jokingly, not jokingly about um, college entries for kids. Right. Yeah. So kids really have this whole thing about they have to do an essay about themselves for colleges. And then I started thinking, I go, well, is AI going to be doing this? Because there's a whole industry around uh, getting into college. Yeah. And I don't mean, hey, we're going to paste your face on a lacrosse player and you look like you play lacrosse. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm just saying there is a real industry of groups that they spend time helping your kid craft something that they hope will get the attention of these universities. And so I asked you about that. Yeah. What do you think? I think absolutely. I think the way, what did you ask me? You were like, do you think that's going to start popping up on Fiverr? Yeah, Yeah. that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like I'd be, we can look right now, but I bet it already has because it's just so easy. All it takes is somebody with like a preliminary understanding of how that system works. And then they can just put it into their algorithm and start to tweak based on what they know. Even if it has to be kind of longer is the unlimited character tokens. Do you think yeah. people are going to be doing their thesis and things like that? I think they already are. Really? Yeah. We talked about the lawyer in Florida that like actually oh. like presented his whole legal brief to the judge and was the judge is like, wait, this isn't true. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that was back when chat GPT wasn't as good. That was still 3.5 instead right. of the new one. So absolutely. I I'm, I'm, would bet heavily that it has already happened. For people to write their thesis. It's interesting. I, I caught a ride the other day from the airport from a lady. But it wasn't an Uber, but it was like an Uber. And she was saying that her, she was in, did something around um, graphic arts and then there, something about writing. And she said Fiverr had really uh, diminished her role, hmm. her job. I wouldn't imagine, I, would, I don't know, I wonder, but I would guess that it's probably not Fiverr and people on Fiverr using these tools. Because it's not like they're the most, the best in their field. If they're on Fiverr, you know, these are very cheap tasks. They're Mm -hmm. charging very little for them. But that they have all these tools to make this so accessible and so easy and so high quality. Mm -hmm. Um, This is one of actually the interesting things because Sam Altman was doing the rounds this week. And one of the interesting things that he said was that he's like, five years ago, we thought it was going to like AI was going to replace jobs and it was going to go blue collar, white collar, and then maybe creativity at some point. But we don't know because it's like a magical thing that nobody understands. And And it's gone opposite. Creativity has been like there's artists and writers all losing their jobs first and then white collar and maybe blue collar at some point in the future once these robots and everything starts getting automated. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like. There's all these, you know, if, if you have artists that have now lost their jobs because Midjourney can do just imitate their work or do even a better job in some cases, but you still have 200 people working in an Amazon fulfillment center, it's almost like we've become the slaves to this thing. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't say this part, but that's like, that's just a really interesting perspective on like, oh, that was, this went way different than we thought. <laughs> Who was I listening to? Somebody, 
uh, some podcast and they were like, there's no way. Was this the other night? Or was I with you where it was like, the humans are not going to give up control to the machines? It sounds familiar, but what? I'm more. trying to remember. Uh, but I thought, oh, is it, that, is it that clear cut? I don't think so. I don't think it's that clear cut. Like the yeah. boss won't give up control to the machines, but the boss is more than happy to have the machines do the work. Yeah. And I think we're all going to start to become bosses in that sense. Like we're all going to become managers and curators for artists, as opposed to just like, we're just doing the design. We're picking the best designs and then presenting those to the clients for an artistic role or for a manager role. Your, you know, what, what right now be a lower level employee is actually managing all these different tasks because you have these autonomous AI agents doing all these tasks and you're then presenting this to your higher ups and saying, okay, we've done all these things and here's mm -hmm. the results. Interesting. So just for fun, I did I, at least two, almost maybe, I don't know if I did three, but I did two interviews for sure this week, uh, Duncan Trussell and Ragu Marcus with another interview, a woman, uh, Dr. Nicola Perra and uh, very different, but for fun. Uh, and I, I read their books. Uh, one is, um, the movie of, uh, me to the movie of we, and her, uh, she has a third book on sort of being, forgive me, being the love that you want or mm. something. It's her third book, but I read these books and I'm busy, but still I thought, all right, I'm just going to see. So I asked chat GPT, the top five questions that you would ask. Right. And they were okay. Yeah. They weren't great. But did it inspire anything? That was more interesting. And yeah. also I'm in this way, not old school, but I figure if you took the time to write the book and are taking the time to talk to me, I'm going to really try to also feel out what is landed for me. Because I also feel like if you listen to someone's show, you listen also for their point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, so I tried to be disciplined in that, but I, I'm not, I, I did wanted to see, and they were good. Like if I was a 20 something who was like, Hey man, how can I get into this? Yeah. And it's a side hustle and I have a real job. It would be an interesting way to kind of right. jump the line yeah, and really get a kind of get your head around some of the concepts in some pretty good, solid, broad strokes. Right. I, and I love that you're still completely like, no, I want to do this. And it's just augmenting it or enhancing it potentially mm -hmm. with these tools. Cause like you've got the five questions. You're like, nah, these aren't as good like yeah. for maybe for somebody else. They might work perfectly, but for you, it, it might even prompt from like, that's what I see the potential. At, like, that was a good you. question though. Asking yeah. me, well, did it inspire anything? Yeah. And the other thing is, is we, we will say this one, you know, thousands of times, nothing is a substitute for experience. And so you can have all the knowledge and the co concepts, but it's like, well, wait a second. How does that, what does that play out in real life and in experience? And so I think that that's a, that's such a great thing because it's like human touch, human company mm -hmm. and human experience, even if it's the humanity part. Okay. We're talking about, you know, getting a product from A to B. All right. Maybe we can farm that out. Yeah. But did you see the massager? Did I show you that? No. They had a robot massager. Oh, yeah. Did it look good? Because no. they had those massage chairs, that, like sharper yeah. image. This forever. is like the next iteration of that. Okay. And um, it was like a flat kind of block. Try to imagine almost like a robot that would be standing. But it doesn't have a head or anything. Okay. It's just like a tall yeah. mechanism. Then with this arm that comes out that articulates through what would be like an elbow. Yeah. So it could move up and down your back with like this block. Okay. So that was there. But it was funny. I showed um, L. Yeah. And there's a lot of like studies about the power of touch. Yeah. And how you can use all these like guns and things and right. like a Theragun, not yeah. a gun. And uh all of these tools, but that there's so much data suggesting that the healing part of touch. Yeah. So no, there's no, I, I can't see a near future at some point, all bets are off, but a near yeah. future where the robot touch is going to produce oxytocin, you know, or right. all those things that come with the hu feeling human hands connecting with another human. Yeah. Like that's, that's sacred. And I haven't read data on, but I know that ejaculating, um, you know, without in without intimacy versus like masturbation, which I'd imagine also with like a robot or a pocket tool or mm -hmm. sorts, that actually has a different hormonal 
uh, impact on you and your health for sure altogether. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with that. And I also, that one's interesting because I think that's important. Like there's, because there's, there's such an epidemic of loneliness yeah. and like you have all these, a lot of the, you know, young males that are become school shooters. It was like, they were so denied that. Yeah. So if we can give them a, you know, someone in that position of resemblance of something like that, I don't see that as a bad thing. So you're th- saying something's better than nothing. I think so. In that respect. Yeah, mm. I think so. <laughs> I was listening to the, a pretty in, in-depth conversation around these dolls that they're making and stuff, but there's no male dolls. Oh, really? None? Not really. None? Okay, well, I'm not going to oh, say I, none oh, you know, because yeah, yeah. no offense, but yeah. you do have a lot of gay guys too. So like, you know, no matter what, but like basically what they're saying is that men's drive, men are driving this this market. That's not surprising. And I, and I wouldn't imagine it's none. Like even if there's some, but, yeah, you know, it's like yeah. all around the oh, female anatomy. It, it, that makes sense. I mean, sad. It, it, it's just biologically we seem to be wired that way. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no. I'm not saying it's sad that guys are want more sex. No, yeah. It's just sad that. That we're at that state. They're, yeah. It's sad. Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting thing. Like I had a friend who, a female friend that recently like started doing testosterone and she was just like, what the, like, she's like, I had no idea what you guys have to go through. Like, she's like, this is real. This is a hell of a drug. And I'm like, yeah, we, we live with that. Oh yeah. What was the thing that we were talking about where a guy was saying, um, I used to, you know, down to like appreciate a woman's ankle. And then he was taking testosterone and it literally, became a thing of like, it didn't, it didn't even matter. It was just like the sexual drive. I've experienced uh, not that, but I've experienced a boost in kind of that feeling taking testosterone myself. Mm. And it's kind of wild. It's a hell of a drug. Yeah, I do appreciate that. (laughs) It's a, I think it's a good perspective because then you can have some sort of empathy and you're like, oh shit, you're living with that. That's a, that's a real thing. Well, that's a line I've heard in my house. What? Well, so my house is filled with women, but I do have one man, and he is very masculine. And one day Laird was in the shower and um, I was standing in the bathroom and we were sort of visiting or talking. And then I think he caught a glimpse in my eye and he's like, oh yeah, you think it's tough to live with? He's like, try being like this. You know? <laughs> and I thought, touche. And touché. I just walked out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So I do. I think it. I think we can learn a lot from each other. All right, we'll yeah. try to get back onto technology task. Um, I mean, it's all technology in some ways. I mean, TRT is technology. In, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So I mean, I, I just. I mean, yes. Okay, we can get back on like the tech yeah. in like the AI specific yeah. task, but it's all technology in that respect. Those parts of it. That that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I'll have to think about that. I think. <laughs> How's your dating life going? Ah, uh, it's a you've had a complex I'm, couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trusting the universe. So, I I have to feel that if when people feel things, the world is feeling these things. Mm. And I think even though we're in the new year and there is sort of some, I think new year no matter what we're always going to people enter with this optimism, mm. which is great, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to work out more. I'm going to spend more time with my friends. It's not going to be so insane in the world. Now that we are three weeks in. I do feel my skis were down a little bit yesterday and that doesn't happen really that often. You saw me snap about the the bowl in the sink last night. It, that, it seemed appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. So the, for this, <laughs> I'll, I'll share this. This is something I wouldn't, I am not proud of, but that I did. So last night um, I went to the store, I got food, I made dinner. I paid for the food. Um, I'm, and I have, by the way, I have, a few people in my house that are incredibly helpful. I have my youngest teenager is takes care of her own real estate and that's it. Um, whatever. So the young adults were are cleaning up and they they're helpful and they usually do a great job. But I don't know, for whatever reason, it was like a couple things were left in the sink. It was sort of like halfway done, but not done. And I decided that I needed to say something. And I have to tell you, that's you wouldn't think that coming from my personality, but I did. I was like, hey, is are, are we gonna finish this job or not? And I, the level of stress it puts on me to have to say something mm. to people, um, it's really weird because mm. it's in contrast to in certain parts of my personality. So after this many years of parenting and doing it, mm. I'm still feel bad that I'm being kind of 
direct, over direct, or what what feels to me is like mean. This is a question though. Would you have felt worse if you had suppressed it and held it in? No. I just would have done it and been like, these fucking these kids will learn, you know, whatever. No, because I'm a doer. Yeah. I'm a come up from the rear and clean up and just get it done person. I don't fuck with that. So yeah. I think that it's harder for me to be like, to ask, to get it done. To say it. It's just easier to be like, I'm going to get it done and be done with it. Way easier. And it, it was weird. Suppressing it. Um, I don't know that I suppress it. I think it and I work through it and get rid of it. Got it. I don't hold it. Yeah, well, that's, that's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And for whatever reason, I don't know what came over me. And when I was doing it, I was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you saying anything? And I think it's also a fear of like um, exposure and entanglement. By expressing it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like to have everything nice and neat. Huh. And maybe that's a good sign. Meaning it's a good sign that I said something. I, I think so. Because you rarely say anything. I know. So when you do, it's like, oh shit, volume's up to 11 because it's... Yeah, but I just want everyone to know, like as a parent, um, and I'm direct, I, I yeah, feel like very. with my friends, but it is still uncomfortable and hard for me to, to act like that. To say what you are feeling or need in the moment? Yeah, yeah. it's hard for sure. And then I, I even said something to, I, I was on a roll last night because <laughs> Larry was talking about something and I was like, how come the conversations always lead to this one thing? He got his feathers ruffled. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> like someone took over my mouth. <laughs> the I, gatekeeper was gone. But I, anyway. I, that's, I, I don't know. I, there's a time and a place for that. Sometimes you just got to say it. I right? know. But I, I just, I think it's good to share that there's other people that can do it. I have friends that can do it so easily. Or they have this beautiful spoken voice and they're like, hey, you know, and I'm always like, oh. Well, it's also, I think that you, like I just said, you don't say things so often. Yeah. And so when you do say something, it's just like, yeah. what's up? What's up? What do we got to yeah. do? Yeah. And then everyone yeah. starts apologizing and then I feel bad. I'm like, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to clean the bowl that's in the sink. Don't say anything. Just walk over and do it, you know? Oh, would you, I don't think if anybody had done that, you would have let them. Oh, I would have. You would have? Yeah. If they hadn't said anything, she would have walked beeline and just done it. Not Vi, though, because she always cooks and does everything. Yeah. So I wouldn't have let her do it. Got it. But the other two? Got it. 100%. Got it. I would have been like, okay. come on, go for it. All right. Good to know. But I'm only sharing that because it's a work in progress. Like we all are. So it's years sure. and years. Yeah. Um, okay, enough about me. So what I, what I was saying is that in the air, I think it's hard. I think, like, you go to the store, food is insane. <laughs> how expensive it is. Yeah. It's insane. And so I'm sensitive to this because I'm, you know, I, I have limits, but I don't have so many limits yeah. and I, I don't know what people must be navigating in like price acceleration of food. Right now it's super cold everywhere. Yeah. And you get you, but I, the reason I'm bringing this up is I saw something and I said to you, how have we gotten to the world where people are, it feels like they're really, there's a lot of batshit crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And you were like, very matter of fact, that what, was it one in a million? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's something like that in terms of psychopaths. Yeah. I think the, we can look it up, but I've heard that number that it's like one in a million people are psychopaths. Yeah. And, and obviously people ranting and raving saying like, I'm a puppy and you miss you know, humaned me or whatever, that gets a lot of attention. So we see more of that than like nice behavior. Hey, good morning. How's it going? Have a great day. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear. But I say that to you and you go, but Gabby, like one in a million ish, whatever is a psychopath. Yeah. And they have to hide. Yeah. And these people don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not only do they not have to hide, but it's like celebrate some ways. Yeah. It's, it's at this moment, culturally accepted for whatever the thing is, if you're not killing someone, I mean, there's limits, but you know, it's yeah. yeah, like there's always going to be those one in a million exceptions in whatever direction. But yeah. when those things are allowed and not just allowed, but actually amplified at times, it's like, oh yeah, cool. I'm going to be as, as vocal as I can about whatever my thing is, mm. you know? Yeah. And the only reason, again, I'm bringing this up is because I'm quite sure people are experiencing this in whatever corner of the world they're in and to remind them that hmm. I don't, I still don't think it's a reflection of the, what most of us, how most of us are living. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not to say I don't appreciate alternative ways of living, but I'm talking about the hysteria, the aggression, 
the quick to correct somebody. Like, I don't think that's the way it really is mm-hmm. in the world. And for people to, it, it's this, it's, it's keeping your own antenna and your own energy, like the positivity, whatever word you want to call it, that signal loud feels a little harder right now. But I, I believe it's imperative. Yeah, more important than that. Yes. Yeah. So whatever that looks like. So when you get when you get a little, things are tough and okay in your personal life or work life or whatever, do you have anything that you do in your practice that helps you keep that signal strong and constant? I mean, you know, I've been doing Byron Katie's Katie Byron Katie's work for so long. I think that's always a tool in my toolkit, and so like that's running even in my head, probably on some subconscious level. Just mm-hmm. being like, wait, is that true? Like looking at my stuff, um, but also just the importance of like when stuff gets really overwhelming. Just okay, f- the physicality and just going and moving, mm-hmm. jumping in cold water, whatever that looks like. Just you know, get engaged physically with something. Mm-hmm. It's like I, there's that Tony Robbins thing where it's like change your state, your physical state, and that really does something. That's essential. And yeah, and I don't know if that's different for men and women with the movement, but I feel like all of us just as physical creatures, like we just got to do something. Yeah. Um, not that that's the only answer, but that's one of these great tools that can get overlooked when we just don't have to move right now. Yeah, I, th- I think this is a really good point. I think for me, that always helps me always. Um, and, and it also keeps it at bay. Mm-hmm. So either it's a prophylactic yeah, yeah. or it's a solution. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then sometimes having that one person you can call that you can actually take the piss out of it and have a laugh. Yeah. Um, I think that's important. Not, yeah, bitching is fine, but I think kind of being like, okay. Yeah. Sharing. Yeah. Yeah. But, ha- and fine. Keeping your humor in there yeah. is I think one of the most important tools. Cause it does also shift your state. Because it gives yeah. you a different view on something that you might be wrestling with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, well, I don't know where it's from, but it's, it's the saying is something like a burden shared is a burden halved. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you do that for me a lot. Like you're that person that I can go and be like, "Yo, Gabby, <laughs> damn." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just it's just that just that gentle reminder. Because again, yeah. we're not unique, and so I know a lot of people are doing their best, but still, it's. It just seems a little thicker, the air yeah. right now. Yeah. It's just a little thicker. I agree. All right. We can we can go back to something um a little more uh techie. <laughs> so Zuckerberg, he made a big announcement. I don't even know what it is. What is it? He did, yeah. I think so. As of recording this, this was yesterday. He went on Instagram and like really it was just like a iPhone recorded oh. video, like really not high production value, just kind of like, hey guys, I'm gonna tell you this thing. And he basically just said, we're going to open source AGI. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what? And we talked about this before yeah. with AGI is artificial general intelligence. And that's like the big thing, meaning like that's a potentially just an unknown consciousness that we have no control over. And it's not, you know, when all these other companies talk about it. It's like, we're, you know, open AI, even them are like, that was the original mission, but no, now we're going to keep it closed source. We don't know if we can trust people with this or whatever it is. And he just was like, yeah, guys, so we have this plan and we have all these NVIDIA GPUs and CPUs and we have all this computing power and we're going to, we're working on open sourcing AGI. And he said, he's like, oh, we're going to do it as safely as possible. But it was just kind of like, wait, wait, wait. But why did he do it like that? I don't really know. You got to ask him because I was, I, it was, it was shocking. And a lot of people, I have a lot of friends in the AI world that were all just like sending me stuff. He's like, what the fuck? What's the what were the comments? Did you read any of the comments? I didn't read the comments. I just had friends like looking at it and like they've sent me just things being like, "Are you kidding? Like, what is happening? Like, they they even were having this AGI conversation so naturally and normally now that we're all talking about this like actual conscious entity that we might be all co-creating to some degree. And now he's talking about just, oh yeah, we're just going to open source it. Not even to say that that's wrong. I don't know how this so all plays out. So to the layman, really explain like why that's so monumental. Well, open source is that everyone has access to the code, mm-hmm. so you have it, it's just giving it out to the public. Like their their model, like their you know ChatGPT model equivalent is called Llama, mm-hmm. and so Llama to it. So they're that's open source, and everyone was like, "Yeah, cool." Like you know, these a this is still AI compared to AGI. Mm-hmm. So these this AI model is open source, and a lot of people appreciated that, and people are doing creative, cool stuff with it. And I think in the beginning of OpenAI, with when Elon was starting it with Sam and those guys, it was like that was the goal is to make something that was open. That's why it's called OpenAI. Yeah. So open source 
this thing. And so obviously they've pivoted and gone a different direction and it's not open source. Um, but to have him just so seemingly casually come out and just say that like on this like do you think it's a competitive move against yeah yeah that's that's definitely a possibility but it's this is a hell of a move like even if it's competitive whatever the impetus behind it is that's is there a way that the more you do it like that that you're accessing everyone to help you build it more and even though they say it's open that really most of us won't know how to utilize that or access access that for real like, you know, I was joking with you the other day about, oh, t- Tesla's really like a mapping company, uh-huh. right? Like, yeah. huh. But that's not a joke. Right. Yeah. But this is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. are they just using us to sort of figure out how to build it for them somehow? I, I, a lot of, I think a lot of the AI large language models currently are doing that. That's why, like, they've just released these things. And so it's like learning and figuring it out all kind of publicly to some degree. Mm-hmm. And this, though, is different because, again, when you get to AGI, that's like, that's a conscious entity as far as we all understand. So that's a totally different ball game. And to just be like, yeah, casually like, guys, yeah, we're going to open source it and we're going to create an open source. I was just like, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. Sounds like it's a competition between all these companies. Maybe. Sounds like this is, I mean, you joke that the race between the U.S. and China figuring it out. Is, oh, is a real thing. It, it is. I, I mean, it's a real thing in terms of like people's fear, but the reality is I think as far as we all know, the U.S. is so much further ahead. How is that possible? What do you mean? Silicon Valley? How is that possible? Like that yeah, is like, like I mean, how is, how are we that far ahead on anything? We, I mean, than China. There's, I mean, think of, there's a multitude of reasons, but like, so Silicon Valley being the equivalent, if not better than the Hollywood of tech. Right? right. So it just attracts but, the best talent. If you want to do that, like everyone comes from all over the world to work in Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. And like, if you look at a map of just the Valley and like around San Jose, it's like you have Apple and Google and Facebook and or Meta and, you know, mm-hmm. like oh, just Microsoft, everything is all right there. It's like you have trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of market cap just right in this little vicinity. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's obscene. And any other country can, you know, the UK is is starting, like they're doing a lot of work trying to like get their systems and like building infrastructure and trying to attract talent over there. And I'm sure China's doing a lot of stuff we don't know about. At the same time, I think Silicon Valley is just so much further ahead. I mean, this is where all this mm. stuff was born, you know? Okay. I like, like your, how optimistic you are. <laughs> I mean, I try and be, like we talked about, I try and be realistic. It just, mm-hmm. my realistic perspective is seeming optimistic but i also want to point out things that are like whoa whoa what the what the mm-hmm. yeah and you you were sharing that now microsoft uh is this for the first time in a long time is oh, more valuable than apple yeah but in the last 15 or so years for sure i mean for a long i mean a few years ago microsoft wasn't even really in the conversation you know it was like apple and then like meta was up there and like the, you know there's these other companies that are emerging but like you know for a long time it was the oil companies were the most sure. valuable companies. And it was a big deal when Apple even crossed the trillion dollar market cap. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden now it's a three trillion, you know, and now Microsoft has come up and I really think it's a huge part, if not completely because of their huge bet on AI. You know, they're the largest investors in open AI. Uh, and, and Apple's been really quiet on the AI front. Everyone thinks that they're building stuff behind the scenes, which is probably a safe bet. But they, in terms of like them coming out publicly and talking about AI, mm-hmm it hasn't really been part of the conversation. And obviously that's the biggest buzzword right now is AI and everyone, you know, you say AI and you get this huge bump in your valuation, you know? Mm, so, so this whole investment in in uh, Sam's company yeah. is probably, you think what put him up there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause w- even if you look back last year before GPT was like, as GPT was just this time last year was kind of coming on the scene into our awareness, like, wait, what's this, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know where their market cap was, but it was not. It, I don't think anybody would have predicted that this time next year they would have be they would be the number one ahead of Apple. Wow! So that that was just like, oh, okay, good mm. to know. We'll see how long it lasts because you know Tim Cook could come out next week and say, okay, here's our AI suite of products that we've just been like working on in secret, and boom, you know, yeah. Do you have a feeling about who really has? their hands around it the most? I, if I was to bet. If you're, mm-hmm. oh, I would bet open, you, a, open AI. You, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, even when, when Google came out with their large model G, 
Gemini, like everything that they presented as like, this is the latest and greatest and here's what we can do now. It's already everything that the current GPT can do, let alone the next version, whether it's GPT 4.5 or GPT 5 or whatever they're going to call it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so if they're like, forcing themselves to Google, they're forcing themselves to get out in front of you. Like, Look what we have. And it's like just as good as the thing that's already out there from this other company mm -hmm. with 700 employees. You know, <laughs> that's, that's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So remind me all the, at this current moment, because I am a neophyte, you know, I only play around with chat GPT. I'm, you know, I do have the paid model. So I, I took a real big leap. Yeah. You got the GPT store now too. Yeah, was it nineteen ninety nine a month? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let let's talk about that first. So now the GPT uh, store is out. I originally thought it was going to be like a paid deal. Um, we even had all these, you know, great analogies that if you had a formula about something, you could go ahead and put that all and condense it for somebody, and then you could learn everything about marketing yeah. or whatever. Um, so, but it's different. Well, that part is still the case. What you can do with it, mm -hmm. uh, the the way that they're doing the ad or the revenue share is that they're doing it by usage right now. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, you get to charge whatever you want to use the GPT. But if your your GPT is being used, they're going to give you a certain percent. And I don't even know if they've- So there's a special it. cost. If I go, hey, I want to use Elijah's GPT, then I pay a little bump. No. It's, it's in the cost, the yeah. whole membership cost. Yeah. So what's the difference of the one I'm paying for versus the GPT store? Is you, you have access to it. I do right now do, for my nineteen ninety nine month. Yes, you do. So I could use all of the yeah. stores for the same price. Yes. And why would they give a rev share? How are they going to keep up with that? We're going to find out. Oh, they might change it, but uh, they they also. Uh, I mean, you have access for that membership. You have access to Dolly, which is like the image generator. So you could just go on and be like, "Hey, create me a YouTube thumbnail for my next podcast." Or you know, it, it, there's a lot that comes with that twenty dollars. Interesting. So what are you using? Uh, what else is a part of ChatGPT besides the store and Dolly? Do, do they have other things? Um, I mean, the store is, it's like a, th there's a lot. Did you look at, did you look oh, yeah. around? I've been messing with it. It's cool. There's some cool what, things. Tell me how you used it. Uh, one that's really interesting is from a company called Consensus. Mm -hmm. And they take all of the research papers from PubMed and just everywhere across the internet. You can ask a question and it will give you all the citations for the research papers. And it mm -hmm. comes up with some sort of a consensus based on the amount of research. Uh -huh. So everyone's like, oh, there's a study for this. And there's a study for this. It's mm -hmm. like, if you ask consensus, it gives you the most studies about the thing. Like, I remember having a doctor at one point, I had high LDL and he was trying to get me to go on a statin. And I was mm -hmm. like, isn't there research that says like statins hurt your mitochondria? And he's yeah. like, oh, well, no, there's only a few studies that say that. So now I can go on a consensus in the doctor's office, pull it up and be like, look, there's 4,000. Will 4, it really 000. tell you that? It did. I looked, I checked. I mean, do you, do you think it can get uh, at all kind of soiled though? Like if we started going... Uh, let's just say hypothetically talking about like a certain shot or something and like uh -huh. it being good protection. Do, I, we don't think that that data is soiled. I think it's just going to go on the amount of like validated published studies. Got it. Yeah. But the, the statins affecting your mitochondria, that was like on consensus. It was like, yes. Really? Yes, it does. So people who like to self-diagnose will be in hog heaven. <laughs> Yeah. Or even these, like, you know, whenever, whenever someone says, you, oh, well, there's a study that says da da da, da. Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, okay, let's see what there's more studies of. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so that, that was a cool one. Okay. Um, there, oh, one interesting one was there's like a Joe Rogan one. And it's like all of the Joe Rogan thousands of podcasts and how many freaking hours. Um, but you could just ask it anything from those podcasts. You're like, wait, at one, one okay. of these four hour podcasts, I heard him mention like some great place to get ribs in Texas mm -hmm, or whatever mm -hmm. the thing is. And we'll be like, oh yeah, on episode, blah, 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 he recommends these places. And like, who, who has permission to do that? I don't know if anybody has permission to do this stuff right now. This is new territory, but it's on there as of right now. <laughs> What's that one called? I think it's just called like Joe Rogan <laughs> GPT. I can look it up, but wow. yeah, they did the same thing with Andrew Huberman. It's like, you can ask like anything yeah, that it's like, oh, data. what's his, you know, what's Huberman's sleep protocol? And it gives you, oh, he recommends these supplements and yeah. So this was like what we were talking about wow. last week before this came out. Like what when you were saying, what would I do? You, Gabby. And yeah. you, I was like, well, you could just upload all your, you know, public available talks or podcasts, whatever it is. And then someone could have a interactive conversation with that. It's like, what does Gabby recommend for this? Or what is, you know, she talked to somebody, I can't remember who. And they said, da, da, da. That's amazing. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. My store would offer about three things. 
Just that kidding. way. I'm <laughs> totally kidding. And they'd be like, well, she said a lot of different things that are in conflict. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, you know, but if you can take like the four billion hours of Joe Rogan, you can condense that into something that's, that's amazing. Understand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You seem geeked out and excited about this. I mean, it's, it's I'm cool. I'm just trying to think yeah. about like who the hell is going to have more time to be doing this, you know? What do you mean? It's just funny how I find that the more technology makes it easier for me, I feel overwhelmed by how much stuff there is for me to be able, because then I'm like, oh, I, I want to see that. And I want to see this. I always feel slightly kind of behind. Mm -hmm. And it's like how I feel like if I see someone's podcast that I like, and I realize I haven't seen, really paid, listened to any of their shows in like the last seven or 10. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so that is an interesting uh place where it's like there's more and it's right. condensed and it's easier and then you're like oh wow one yeah. more thing yeah so i get that and it's also i think really being aware that what you're talking about is the you know fomo that we all experience you know that fear of missing out whatever that is mm -hmm. so it's just it's just being like okay i only have so much time yeah i'm choosing to allocate this much time yeah even if it's i'm being conscious i'm going to spend time just to learn this thing right now so in the future i believe it's going to pay off by helping me save yeah. time, you mm -hmm. know, but listen, nobody in this space that I know of, and I know a lot of people <laughs> can really keep up with the, oh. the pace of change. No. And I, I mean, listen, you know what I do, especially like when I'm cooking dinner, you, I think, you know, this, I default and I just go listen to Tim Dillon or oh, like yes. Theo Vaughn, yeah. like I'll go the other yeah. way <laughs> where I'm like, I want to kind of laugh. No, I want to laugh. And I sort of want to hear, especially Tim Dillon, because he does actually talk about stuff that's going on. He just, you know, it's like he was talking <laughs> the other day. And I don't know why I get such a kick out of it, but I do. And I, I don't care. It's like my juvenile self, I guess. But he was talking about how, you know, you're going to own nothing and like it. And then he was talking about all these people who were on Social Security and this guy was living and he, and he uh, was thinking about actually going to the pound and getting a dog. And that some months, you know, he's got an extra $150 to buy food that he doesn't probably want, like chicken and veggies. And so here's Tim Dillon. And you know how he does his voice? He's like, chicken, you want more chicken? You know, it's like, it, it's like this thing where sometimes when it is crazy, I need to laugh. Yeah. Because it's the only the way yeah. I can take it. So for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think that's great. You, yeah. you know, because yeah, so it's like, it's like eating. Like sometimes you got to have dessert. Yeah. You know? it's, it's just like, like it, the more serious yeah. it gets, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I need to take a step back here yeah. and just have a laugh. That's like self-care. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, it's and not having that. There's infinite amount of information yes. in, in podcasts and whatever, more than we could ever consume. And so just being like, you, this is what I got yeah. today. And that's what I want to remind people too, is as somebody who has practiced pretty religiously since 1987, 1988, a pretty um, active lifestyle with eating better choices. I mean, I did carbo load. I'm not going to lie in the early nineties because that's what we did. Yep, yep. They're like, get a carbo load. Yep. You got a game tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> so I had bagels and pasta. I did do that. Yep. Um, it's all an experiment. It's really just about being consistent and having a practice yeah. and not don't get overwhelmed by it. Because even me, who knows a decent amount and has been involved for a period of time in this, sometimes I'm like, whoa, yeah. it's too much. Yeah. So I did think I was like, we should do the For Your Love of Tyndale and we can just do one podcast where we just wear the aviators and just go on <laughs> fucking rants. <laughs> <laughs> Only he can do it. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. It's amazing. He just goes. And I, he wears the coat, the beaver fur oh, coat yeah. or whatever oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, you and I, uh, you sent me a video of uh, Jamie Diamond. Mm. And it's. Is no, it, you is, actually, you sent it to me. Did I send it to you? Yeah. Because I, we were talking. Oh, because you'd sent me something about that you'd like that he said earlier. It, it was during that uh, New York Times thing where Elon told everybody to go fuck themselves. Yes. And I was like, and I heard Jamie's interview and it kind of went under the radar because that all got all the attention. I was yeah. like, that guy's kind of a G. Like he's saying some really smart not just like intellectually smart, but like emotionally yeah. thoughtful, thoughtful stuff about like how we all need to come together and we can't just be like blue and red and mm. Democrat, Republican. And then you sent me this video. Yeah. So he, uh, for those of you who don't know who he is and most of you wouldn't, he's, uh, is he the CEO of JP Morgan? Yeah. So obviously I always feel like these, these guys in these financial institutes, they also have an inside view on things that are going on, but he basically sort of implied that we can't um, assume because maybe somebody's for a gun or um, in making America a good place to live, 
So you want people to have a living wage and be able to feed their kids and get an education that then all of a sudden somehow he's like that there's Trumpers. Mm -hmm. He's like 75 million people. Like we're all more decent than whatever that notion is. Yeah. And so he was really reasonable. And I believe it was on CNBC. I think you're right. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of interesting because yeah. they wouldn't even show, uh, let's see, what's her name? Rachel Maddow, that group. And what other group wouldn't, remember, yeah. wouldn't show Trump's acceptance speech. Yeah. Because they don't want to have misinformation or spread things that, I don't know. Something, I don't remember. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And um and so he comes on and says that, and it's not, this is not about being for Trump. It's just about um, somebody, a voice of reason. Yeah. <laughs> that was all. Yeah. I thought he was a voice of reason. Yeah. And who, someone else was accusing, right? What were you telling me that they called the uh, election or the numbers before? Oh yeah. Well, that was what was so this crazy so about funny. the Trump thing. Yeah. They were, cause all, cause like everyone on the Trump side was saying like, oh, you know, MSNBC and CNN, they won't show uh -huh. Trump's interviews. So like they hate Trump. And then I think it was like Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis came out and they're like, oh, because CNN called the election early in, in, in Iowa, yeah. like they're trying to support Trump. And yeah. it's like, so every side is being like, wait, what? What, what, what is amazing. What are we doing? Yeah. So I, I just hope that people are slowing down, paying attention for themselves and, um, and maybe listening to people a little bit with a voice of reason. Okay, so I'm gonna play you one thing I heard today that I played for Viola and people can find it. It's it's probably a few minutes. So if people are sick of us, um, thank you for your time, Elijah. I appreciate thank you so you. much. Oh. And, um, and I'm always learning and I'll tell you, I'll mess around, I'll go into the store now that I know. I'm not so into the image generators for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I'm just not. Well, you don't use that so much in your day to day. No. Yeah. Okay. So this is from mentorspark. E R I X on Instagram, but I, I'm not promoting them. I just liked this part of uh, what what he shared. So I'll play it. Yeah. Hold on. Principles allows you to gain deeper wisdom about yourself and the world. The first principle is mentalism. Mentalism states that the entire universe is mental in nature. Our thoughts and consciousness shape our subjective experience of reality. The second principle is correspondence. Correspondence refers to the idea that patterns existing on the macro scale of the cosmos also exist on the micro scale within an individual. As above, so below. The third principle is vibration. Vibration states that all things in existence consist of energy vibrating at different rates. By controlling one's own vibration, one's subjective experience can be shaped. The fourth principle is polarity. Polarity recognizes that apparent opposites like light, dark, good, evil are extremes of the same thing. Integrating opposites leads to truth. The fifth principle is rhythm. Rhythm reflects the ebb and flow of the universe between extremes in an endless cycle. The sixth principle is cause and effect. Cause and effect states that every effect has a preceding cause. One can influence outcomes by one's actions. The seventh principle is gender. Gender realizes masculine and feminine energies exist in all things and must be balanced for creation. Understanding. Anyway, I thought yeah. it was very pretty. And which reminds me of the book we've been sharing. That's so, what I was going to say. So I wanted to play that. And then I, I don't know how I found this book, who sent it to me. Um, but then I shared it with you and you are liking it as well. Loved it. So it's a book that if I am not alone listening to, um, I, I can't catch it. I'll be honest with you. And before I forget, Dr. Nicola Perra's book is How to Be the Love You Seek. Got it. So I was close, but I was off. So anyway, so this is a book that uh, it's only four chapters and uh, it's called Leadership and the new science it's by margaret j wheatley so yeah. if anyone is interested it's a it's a it's about quantum physics in life yeah i mean i'd love for you to share uh what you've been enjoying about it because i think it's a it's a beautiful book right i mean th there's i mean there's so much that they talked about in that especially as above so below and mm -hmm. that's just fractals right you know it's just like you know, she talks about the mandelbrot set in the book which is like this infinite in infinite out it's like when you try and measure a coastline you know it's like actually is you can get as granular as you want you can get down to the grains of sand you can actually never really measure a coastline 
Um, but I think one of the things that stood out to me, I don't know, many, I have, I have a bunch of notes in that book, but uh, the idea that leadership is what you do and that it's not so much a role. Like it's you, you show up as like what you do and your how you are in the world and what we are, our, our actions determine who is the leader. It's not like you're just given the role. Okay, you're the leader. So you take it. It's like, no, you earn that or you do something that puts you in the position to then be the leader because we all listen to that. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, I see that, especially in this house with Lair. And it's just like, I feel like you live that. And it's just, yeah. it's really, that that got me. And there's there's quite a, I can go through my notes on it too, but that that one stood out in a really just simple, clear way. And, and it, it, you know, I think about it for my one job, you know, when I'm directing stuff, because it's like, in in that creative endeavor, like I'm in that position of a leadership as you know as a director, but it's really, I see it as actually Ray Dalio said this term, and I see it in the same way. It's like it's an idea meritocracy, where it's like the best idea wins. Mm-hmm. And for me, I just see my role as helping facilitate those ideas and pointing out and be like, yes, no, like let's all collaborate and create this thing together. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's very unique to just being a director because it's, it's a collaborative medium. But in all of those things and all that we do, it's like leadership is what you do. And yeah. that that decides who's going to be the captain on that one. Yeah. So I just, we wanted to bring that up because yeah. that's sort of current this week. So the leadership of the new science, and it's by Margaret Wheatley. So if people are interested, Lige, Yo. I might become a tech head yet. You never know. You, I mean, you, you kind of are. Look, you got the whole podcast set up. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, when we start this, I say to Lige, yeah, go ahead, get everything dialed up. Because, I mean, if I had to figure out how to get all the cameras and everything recording, maybe, but. I think you've done a great job. And right. you listen, tech head is a very relative term because like you could ask somebody that has no idea and you're like, oh, you are dialed like from oh, emails to podcasts to oh, mics yeah. and everything. You've got Thank this. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. So to next time, we'll see what next week brings. We'll it's see. the ever-changing world. It truly is. Like in that statement has maybe never been more true. Like Sam Altman said, he's like talking about open AI and what he's doing. He's like, this might be the last hard thing I ever do. Yeah. Yeah. So. But we, we still have to be people. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Okay. And this is the time of, <laughs> who knows? Sanity and humanity. Let's go. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you want to learn more, there is a ton of valuable information on my website. All you have to do is go to gabriellereese.com or head to the episode show notes to find a full breakdown with helpful links to studies, research, books, podcasts, and so much more. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and send them to at Gabby Reese on Instagram. And if you feel inspired, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.